hello people, uh, TG1742 here. So, this will be sort of an updated video of how things are going in my shack. Um, yes, I am working towards my ham license. Um, so, this will be a video on a budget build UHF 40 channel. Um, well, carry and go sort of case. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any footage whatsoever of me actually making the case. Um, but uh, there's a there's a little bit of footage here of me showing how it works, the design concept, and the um, the overall sort of performance of it. So, without further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay, so I haven't done a video in a while. Um, I figured it'd be about time to do another video. Um, UHF 5 watt uh, Pierce Simpson Leopard. It's not going to focus. There we go. Um, PRS, Personal Radio Service Channel 2. Um, this little cradle that me and my dad designed. And this is the final product. Um, the idea is it's a plug and play design. Um, BNC on the top. Um, designed to sort of, I don't know, put it in, in, the, in the back of a car or run with it uh, in a case of emergency communication um, I am planning to make a, a 26 megahertz 27 megahertz version uh, with the 26 megahertz antenna for the New Zealand 26 megahertz CB band um, so with the, the, the antenna I'm using at the moment is a, well it's a mobile well, it's not a mobile antenna, it's a, it's a handheld antenna that I've got plugged into this. Um, it's not the right connector, but it does the job. Um, I've got a BNC to PL259 adapter with a PL259 male pressing into that with a 50 ohm RG58U coaxial uh, heading outside. Um, and it's standard GME electrophone microphone nothing special this was a budget build this cost me with the lead acid battery below it only $35 um, the radio got for nothing at a ham junk sale um, that we're chucking out for nothing it's a 40 channel UHF uh, transceiver um, duplex enabled um, my my you know, microphones. I did not have any configured um, for this pinout of this radio, so I had to make a pinout. Um, the next plan is is to put a ground plane on underneath that BNC connector. So if I pull pull it off. So there's plans to put. I'm going to put a plate of aluminium on the front here. It's either a plate of aluminium on the, on the top underneath this handle or it's going to be a, a speaker because the speaker inside this is well, perished. I'm going to have to pull it apart and put a new speaker in it. Um, apart from that it works great. So I'm just going to pause here and I'm going to go through and show you the antenna. Okay, so the cradle um, has a very simple design. Now the thing is, is it's configured only for the Pear Simpson Leopard. Um, that gap at the top is designed to be flush with the with the radio at the top, um, as you saw earlier. Um, the whole thing is constructed to ply. Um, the idea is, is you slide the radio in, 
sits up against these slides up against these gaps here on the side um, and then it has a piece of wood that you slide in probably about about the same length as that that one on the other side but it will cover this whole panel underneath so it sits underneath this lip under here um, so everything's sort of self-contained um, plans with the other one, so this is going to be my friend's one. Um, I'm thinking of cutting a hole in the side, well, on this side because the wood is thicker and this stuff's much more thin. Um, I'm going to put an ammeter, a voltmeter, to give you an indication of power so you don't drain a lead acid battery too long. Um, Yeah, it's at this point it's prototypes, but the one I got in my room is pretty much going to be not touched after I get a bottom on it. But um, that one I'm going to just um, marginally improve, so that's probably Mark 2. Uh, the first one was Mark 1. Okay, so how does it measure up against other radios? So this being a budget build, this is about sort of getting out on the UHF spectrum for me. Um, partly because I'm, I'm, I've got no money, but most of this stuff was saving up and um, sort of getting all the gear together. Um, this doesn't necessarily have to consist around the Leopard, but the idea concept is, is that you, well, you slot in any radio in, so it's plug and play. So pretty much you put it in the bottom, you plug it in, you got a BNC output, plug in the antenna you want into it, and away you go. Okay, so, um, like the name implies on my YouTube channel, um, I go by the call sign of TG1742, but I like to use 1742. Um, the TG being where I live, Tauranga. Um, we tend to use the abbreviation TGA um, over here, just as an abbreviation for where I live. Okay, so calling out on the repeater. Um, let's give this a try. 1742, looking for any contacts out there on channel 2. Over. Um, so far it's been pretty damn quiet today. There's been nobody out on PRS, personal radio service. Um, it's pretty dead to be honest with you. Okay, so... I hope you guys enjoyed that, um, even though that there was no contacts there on channel 2 at the time, which would have been about half an hour ago when I filmed that. Um, you can hear the radio hitting the repeater. Um, of course, the higher you put an antenna, the more gain you will get. Uh, UHF being UHF, it's clear line of sight. It's um, CBA, uh, CB, um, which is limited to 5 watts here in New Zealand. Um, you won't get, you won't get further than 20 kilometres, but with an aid of a repeater, possibly 100, 100 kilometres plus. Um, like I said, it's a concept idea and that it's prototyped. Um, it's only a only a bit of a, an idea pointer. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks.